It's good to be in the house of the Lord, and I trust that you feel welcomed. I trust that you feel loved and appreciated here in the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anybody that doesn't feel loved, can I just see, raise your hand quickly. You say, well, I don't feel welcome. I don't feel loved. Anybody feel judged here this morning? Let me see, or condemned. Nobody. Oh, that's a good thing. Then, then we've done a good job so far. Amen. So it's great to be here, and I trust that God is going to bless you. And what we're going to do here this morning is to mobilize you. So with me, I'm going to get mobilized today. It means that in this week that's coming, you're going to have to do a few things for the kingdom of heaven. Is that okay? You see, sometimes we come to church to receive, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that. We all need to receive from God. But today is going to be a little bit different. We call it mobilized to harvest. Amen. And you may ask, why? Why are we preaching this message? And that is because Jesus for Nations has turned 10 years old. I want to thank the Lord today that we're still in ministry, that the doors of this church is still open. After 10 years, a decade, I want to thank God for every soul that was saved and every life that was changed and every family that was restored and every life that was restored. I want to thank God for every person who's been delivered. I want to thank God today for every breakthrough, for every life that changed. I want to give God glory. Hallelujah. And it's all about Him and it's all about Him and it's all for Him, for His glory and His goodness alone. And the Word of the Lord says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 15, and it speaks about great thanksgiving. And what do we need to do to really bring a gift to the Lord for thanking Him? Have you ever thought about that? And the month of November is all about thanking God for 10 years. Thanking God for church, thanking God for the gospel, thanking God that He still moves in people's lives. And if you're a visitor here today, I want you to know that God is still the God who moves, and He will move in your life, and He will touch you. And once you've encountered Him, you can never be the same again. And if you are the same, you have not encountered my Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because if He encounters you, you can't be the same. There are too many people, they call themselves Christians in our day and time, but they're just the same. Listen, if you have a God encounter, you can't be the same. If you meet Jesus, you can't be the same. Hallelujah. And so we dedicate this month in thanksgiving to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Is the sound okay at the outside? Because, you know, my wife, she comes and she tells me, you were too loud, you were too soft, and then I have to fix things. How many, how many of the men here understand when... When, when your wife speaks, you know, that soft voice, you have to listen and pay attention. Amen. So we are in a month of thanksgiving. Amen. And we're going to do a few things in this month. We're going to do two things to be exact. The first one is we are going to, in honor of God, have a harvest event. And let me tell you why. Because the word of the Lord says in 2 Corinthians 4, 15, and, God, and as God's grace reaches more and more people, listen, there will be great... Did you get that? As God's grace does what? Reach what? What will happen when that takes place? Great thanksgiving. How do we thank God? We invite people and bring them to church and their lives get saved. Amen. That's how we thank God. So this is our month of thanksgiving. Thank you for 10 years, Lord. And what we're doing is we have a harvest event. And the second thing we're going to do is we are going to bring a special offering to the Lord on the 27th of November. And by special offering, I mean we are going to dig deep into our finances and bring money to the house of God so that we can bless and continue to advance the kingdom of God. But next week we have the first part. We are going to produce and present and offer the grace of Jesus to more and more people. And then this, this scripture continues to say, and God will receive more and more glory. How many of you want to give God thanksgiving and glory? Can I see? Do you live for God's glory still? Do you live to be thankful to the Lord? Then what do you need to do? You need and I need to make sure that the grace of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the good news, reach who? More and more people. Hallelujah. And I'm so excited about next week because God's going to do great things. Amen. 
He's done it for 10 years. I've seen him done it for 10 years. And he's going to do it next week again. And people are going to give their hearts and their lives to Jesus Christ. If you're in agreement with me, shout aloud, Amen. Give your, and give Jesus a big praise in this place. So this morning is all about what? The harvest event. I'm here to do what? To mobilize you. Again, look at your neighbor and say, I'm here to be mobilized, neighbor. There's a job to be done. There's only one week left. Hallelujah. Come on, people. There's a job to be, what? To be done and there's one week left. And we all have to work. We all have to Amen. Not just, oh, I, I'm a Christian, you know, I, I play the piano. Not that we have one, we're still praying for the piano player. I don't know where, what's happened to that. Or, you know, my gift is a prophecy. No, we thank God for all the gifts. But hey, you are living in a real world with real broken people that I don't know, but you know. And if you don't reach out, the grace of God can't come to them. We've got to work this week. And, and why is it so precious to God? Why is the grace of God that reaches more and more people, why is it thanksgiving? It is thanksgiving to God because of the heartbeat of God. The heartbeat of God is souls. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. What did Jesus came to do? To seek and to save the lost. Come on one more time. What did Jesus came to do in this world? And so when we are like Jesus, and when we live like Jesus, and when we love like Jesus, we seek the lost. We seek to get people to Jesus. Hallelujah. That is our nature. That's who we are. That's who we are, church. The heartbeat of God is souls. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 4 says for this, praying for people. So Timothy, uh, Paul was saying to Timothy, praying for people is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, making intercession for others, praying for other people, praying for people to be saved, praying for the country. He says that's good. Now listen to verse 4. Who desires all men to be saved. Have you ever thought about what is the desire of the Father heart? Have you ever thought about, Lord, what is your desire? What is your dream? Have you ever thought about what God is dreaming about now? God is dreaming about getting people saved, getting people delivered, getting people hold, getting people set free, getting people blessed so that they can be a blessing. That's the heart of the Father Church. Who desires all men? Say this with me. There's a desire in the Father's heart. There's a dream in my Father's heart that all men be saved. And no ladies. <laughs> Obviously, he's referring to mankind. Amen. Ladies, you're included. Don't worry. He's referring to <laughs> mankind. A few of the ladies here goes like, oh, sure. I was worried for a moment there. No, we're all equal before Lord. Amen. How many of you are thankful that Jesus Christ, more than 2,000 years ago, removed all unequality and made us equal before him? Hallelujah. Every tongue, every tribe, every race, every nation, slave or free, man or wife, we are all the same before God. He came to save us. And the desire of the Father is that some people will be saved. My Bible says all. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. So the Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. And He speaks about the second coming of Jesus. I just want to say that I'm expecting that Jesus is our soon and imminent coming King. Hallelujah. It can't be long right now before we will hear the trumpet sound and see the Messiah from heaven coming on the clouds of heaven with his angels and with those who have already died in him. I want to tell somebody here this morning that Jesus Christ is coming. Hallelujah. More than 2,000 years ago, they questioned if the Messiah was coming. And then a child was born from the Virgin Mary. And he came, hallelujah. And so he will come again. We call it the second coming. And are you ready for a church? Listen to this. Instead, he's patient with you. Why is God patient? Why have we not seen Jesus coming yet? The Bible says because he doesn't want anyone to perish. Say with me, harvest. Say with me, harvest. Say with me, mobilize to bring in the harvest. People, I'm telling you, God's going to do great things, set people free. I believe that the best days of Jesus for nations are ahead. 
We have only just begun. Hallelujah. I said we've only just begun as a church and as a people. God has got great things in store for this house. Thousands are coming. There's a revival coming that the world will take note of. A mass conversion is going to take place. We won't have services like that, like last week, baptizing people, because there will be too many. We will have to arrange separate baptism services as people are going to come in. As leaders, you and I are going to stand up to advance the kingdom of God in our city, in our towns, in our homes homes and in our schools I prophesy it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ God doesn't want anyone to perish church and I don't know about you but I'm going to align myself with the dream of Jesus I'm going to align myself with the heart of the Father no man will perish in our city we're going to take the fall triangle hallelujah our communities our streets our homes we're going to take South Africa we will take the world together with the body and the bride of Jesus Christ hallelujah Jesus is coming, but we will be prepared in the name of Jesus. Because when grace comes to more and more people, there's great thanksgiving and more and more glory comes to God. And there's a story in the Bible that Jesus told, a parable. It's called the parable of the great feast. In other translations, it's called the parable of the wedding feast. Have you heard about that story? And it's the parable that Jesus told in response to a man who said it would be great to attend a great dinner in heaven. Somebody asked him that. Lord, it would be great to attend a dinner, a banquet, a buffet. Amen. <laughs> How many of you are hungry here this morning? <laughs> to attend a great buffet in heaven. And Jesus replied to him. And he says, I'm going to give you a great buffet. We will look at it right now because it's a story to mobilize you and me. But what is this great feast? The great feast is the feast that Jesus referred to that speaks about the gospel of Jesus, the good news. The good news that saves people, that delivers people, that bring hope to people, that provide a future for people. It speaks of the grace of God, the unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor. It speaks of the presence of God, the promise of His Holy Spirit. That's the feast. That's the banquet. That's the buffet. Hallelujah. But in the story, Jesus made it very clear that the kingdom of heaven will only be advanced in this world when the church is mobilized. Say with me, mobilized. So in the context of our parable this morning, I want to just quickly mention four points before we're getting into communion that is going to be very practical and sending you out to this place to go and change the world. Are you ready? Thank you for three and a half amens there. Luke 14, verse 15 to 16. A man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, what a blessing it's going to be or it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied with a story, a man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. Say this with me, a man prepared a great feast. Now you already know what the feast is. The feast is the gospel. The feast is the, the, feast is the good news. We eat the word. We eat the promises of God. The promises are for you and me. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever eaten from the gospel? Come on, if you have, give Jesus a big praise. Have you ever eaten the promises of the Word of God? How many of you are saved? How many of you delivered? How many of you restored here this morning? That was the feast. That was the dining table you sit at of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. But you see, for us to continue to offer like this morning, we're offering the gospel. Amen. How many of you are eating today? I know because I saw God touch your life in the worship service. I know because I can see that God is working in you right now. You're getting full. You're getting fed. Hallelujah. You are sitting at the buffet of the kingdom of heaven here this morning. The promises of God becomes to live in you. The realness, the grace, the goodness is coming alive in you. Hallelujah. That's what's happening in you right now, church. But you see, to continue to offer this, we need to prepare. Every Sunday we have to prepare. I know some of you all think, you know, that pastors only work on Sundays. <laughs> but I promise you, we also work hard through the week to prepare. Same with me, prepare. 
And this week, we need to prepare for the great open air harvest event. So you say, Pastor, how can I prepare? You need to pray. You need to fast. As you've heard in the announcements this morning, 6 p.m. Thursday, you stop to eat. One amen. <laughs> Friday evening, 6 p.m., you can eat again. Hallelujah. You can drink water. Don't damage your organs, please. And come to me and say, now you need to pay my medical bills. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Don't damage yourself, but take out the day of fast and prayer, Thursday, 6 p.m. to Friday. I'm talking about preparation, spiritual preparation here. Let's begin to pray for the harvest. Let's begin to pray for the lost. Let's begin to pray for our friends and our family and our neighbors and see the gospel of the kingdom of heaven offered to the lost, to the broken, to the poor. Let's see it, church. Let's see it. And let's do some physical preparations. Let's show up. Amen. Friday, what time? To do what? Not like the previous Fridays where you guys, I don't know where you were. Hallelujah. <laughs> we still love you. Don't worry. Don't feel judged. Don't feel condemned. But we're going to show up and we're going to plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to get prepared for the gospel that's going out because we know that the poor, the brokenhearted, the lost, the unfound, the unchurched, hallelujah, they are going to come to the great buffet, the great banquet of the kingdom of heaven to experience the presence of God, to encounter the grace of Jesus, to eat from the promises of the word of God. Hey, how many of you are excited with me this morning? Say with me, mobilized to harvest. Say with me, this, this gets me excited, but it's to do the work. It's fuel for the work. It's the anointing for the work. Amen. It's not just for me. It's awesome that you will show up. Thank you. You should show up. Why won't you? <laughs> but it's not about you showing up. It's about... With whom are you showing up? We're already saved. If you're not, you, we're going to get to the communion and God's going to touch and change your lives here this morning. If you're uncertain about your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, we have communion in just a moment. And you're going to get saved and born again. Hallelujah. I say you're going to get saved and born again. You see, because it's called a great wedding, it means that when we receive the grace of Jesus, we get married to the bridegroom. Hallelujah. That's what the gospel does. The gospel marries you to Jesus. Brings you in relationship with Jesus. Amen. How many of you are excited about the gospel that brings you in relationship and marriage with the Messiah? Just honor your Messiah and give him a big praise in this place. Hallelujah. He forgave your sins. Hallelujah. There's no other gospel that can forgive the sins of people. Hallelujah. He forgave you. He touched you. He healed you. He made a way for you. Hallelujah. This bridegroom is an awesome king. And I'm going to save him for the rest of my day. Say with me, prepare. I want you all to help us. Because from 3.30 p.m. 30 November next Sunday. By the way, we won't have a morning service. But from half past three, you can come. Help us to carry the chair. Say with me, mobilized. Say with me, to harvest. Say with me, but preparation is compulsory. <laughs> Amen. The chairs, just because we're a church, the chairs doesn't grow wings and fly to be seated at its place. Can I get a big amen there? It's like some Christians think that thing, yeah, things at church, you know, they get wings and they fly to where they need to be. And God supernaturally does things, you know. No. It takes people like you and me to do the work of the ministry. Say with me, I'm called to do the work of the ministry. Say it one more time and believe it this time. I'm called to do the work of the ministry. Yes, we don't have a lot of time. Hey, I'm 46 years old. I've got about 54 or something. That, that's counting to 100. Hallelujah. My time is short. Those 54 years are going to fly by. I know if you're a young person, you don't believe me. It's, it's strange that young people never think that they're going to grow old. They think they stay young all the time. And they mock older guys, like my children. They're often mocking me. Oh, you're getting close to 50. You're getting close to... <laughs> no, 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 no. Time is short. Time's of the essence. We've got one week left. We've got one week left, church. We've got to get there. What's the second thing that we see here? Invitation. Luke 14, 17. When the banquet was ready, when the preparations was done, when the gospel feast was prepared, he sent his servants to tell the guests, 
come. The banquet is, people, the banquet is ready. But what do we need to do? We need to tell the guests to come. Say with me, I must invite. This is going to be an, uh, an intentional week of invitation. I want to say this again. When I prepared yesterday and praying for the service, the Lord said to me, tell the people, it's going to be an intentional week of invitation. You are going to call people that was on your heart that you haven't called yet. You see, the, the registrations we have up until now are the easy ones. You knew you could get them there, right? Hallelujah. But then there's some stubborn ones. And the Lord has been preparing their heart. He's preparing their hearts this morning in the name of Jesus as this word goes out. And you will invite them again. And you will call them and text them and WhatsApp them again. And they will receive the invitation because the Lord has spoken to their hearts already. Because it's time to bring in the harvest, church. Let's be intentional in what? In invitation. Say with me, prepare. Say with me and be intentional in inviting. You see, some people never even picked up the phone to invite anyone. And some people, before you invite them, you judge them. Listen, you can't work with the world like that. You've got to love people. You've got to pray. Don't, don't, don't act as if you're holy and they're not. That's not going to work. Be humble. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, be humble. Yes, be humble and pray. And when God puts a name in your heart, be intentional and call. Amen. And invite. How many of you agree and say, we're going to make this week an intentional week of invitation? Come on. Can I get some commitment here from the crowd? Yeah. Say with me, mobilize to harvest. Mobilize to harvest. The third one. Luke 4, 14, 18 to 20. But they all began making excuses. <laughs> what it, <laughs> you see, Jesus told this parable of a great banquet in heaven. I'm talking about the gospel. Jesus saying this feast, this buffet of the promise of God, of His grace, of His deliverance, His promises for the lives of people. It's prepared by the blood of the Lamb. He says, but people making excuses to go and eat from that. Did you get that? Have you ever met people like that? <laughs> Some of us are like that. Come on. When Sunday morning the alarm, uh, the alarm sounds, you know. Oh, I feel so tired. Jesus will understand. I'm just going to sleep in. Hey, you miss out on eating from the heaven's buffet. I say you're missing out. Come on. You're missing out. You begin to make excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. <laughs> uh, now you got a little busy and caught up in work. Okay, we understand. Please excuse me. Oh, it's okay. Don't eat from the buffet of heaven. Stay, stay busy. Look at this one, verse 19. Another said, I've just bought five pairs of oxen. This guy got a new business. I've just bought. This is a new business. Amen, you business guys. Oh, you, you work too hard. Nah? Yeah, you're always too busy to eat from the buffet. Amen. That Jesus provides for you Sunday after Sunday, cell after cell, prayer meeting after prayer meeting. We always have excuses. He says, I've just bought five pairs of oxen, and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. So I'm going to just be at my business. <laughs> Another said, uh, who, who's, who's talking here? Who's telling this parable? pastor is telling it. It's his own parable. No, it's Jesus' parable. Jesus, Jesus says that people will have excuses when they're invited. He says, another one said, I just got married, so I can't come. This guy said, I prayed for a wife. The Lord gave me a wife, and now I am enjoying my wife at home. So what do we do? We begin to worship the things God give us, the business, the wife, the money, the good life, the good things, we start to worship that instead, in, instead of worshiping God. Can I get a big amen? amen? Don't be sad, just change. Don't feel condemned, just do what? Come on, don't be sad. Amen. Don't be sad. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stop all the excuses, please. The buffet's here. Let's start to serve God and be serious. Amen. And that is why we've got to register. Say with me, prepare, invite, register. Say with me, I'm getting mobilized. To bring in the harvest. <laughs> so we register and we're going to send out the link again this afternoon or early uh, Monday morning. Most of you have got the registration link. 
And why do we register? We register because when we register, we collect commitment from people. In other words, we're telling them, don't come with your excuses. I am doing what? I'm registering. You've given me commitment. So people don't want to disappoint you because they, you are their friend or their neighbor, and they don't want to. And we make it, we, we putting, we're putting something on people to, to come and to live up to their commitment. Amen. That's the advice Jesus gave us. That's the advice we find. We need to learn how to contest excuses. Maybe somebody tell you, well, I'm busy. Tell them, come on. How can I help you? Maybe somebody will tell you, well, I don't have transport money. Can I pick you up? Contest excuses. Let's get people registered. Let's put a demand on the souls of people. Because once they've tasted the kingdom of heaven, hallelujah, their lives are going to be changed, hallelujah. God's going to do a work in their lives, amen, hallelujah. And even if they decide not to give their hearts and lives to Jesus, then at least we've done the work of the ministry. And one day when we meet Jesus, we will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. This is our work on earth. We can't force people to do anything, I understand. So say with me, invite and register. Some of us, you've just registered yourself and your buddy that you know, they always game for a party. Amen. And you feel good. It's one plus one equals not 300. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one plus come on say it one more time it's one plus then lastly our responsibility is to fill the house before we get into communion say with me our responsibility is to fill the house God doesn't want open chairs people empty chairs I'm going to show it to you in a moment from the Bible he doesn't like empty chairs if God doesn't like them you and I shouldn't like them God doesn't like an empty chair. I see a few empty chairs here. It's no good after 10 years. Can we agree this morning? It's no good that we've got empty chairs in our church. But you see, I think it's because we don't understand that we are all supposed to do the work of the ministry. We are all supposed to invite our worlds. You say, what is my world? Your world is your friends, your family, your neighbors, your colleagues. Your world is the place where you live and move and have your being. That's your world. Have you invited your world? God does not like empty chairs. We don't live as Christians for ourselves. Oh, I know Jesus. Oh, I have a church. No. We are out there to bring in the harvest. Mobilized to harvest. Christians who are like Jesus, live like Jesus, love like Jesus, understand that they're not in this world for themselves alone. That, that's, the, that's a basic understanding. You see, that is what we call consumer Christians. Thank God here at JFN, we're not cons Shake your head like this and say, no, no, I'm not a consumer Christian. Amen. In brackets, anymore, after this day. <laughs> and give Jesus a big praise. Come on, praise Him in this place. Honor Him in this place. I'm no longer a consumer Christian. Look at the word of the Lord, Luke 14, 23. After the servant has done that, he reported, Three is, there is still room for more. And I'm here to tell you today, there's room for more. There's room for more. There's room for more. You say, well, what if we get to 300? Take the limits of God. That's just a goal and a system to get us mobilized. What if 400 shows up and 100 give their hearts and lives to Jesus? Hallelujah! You see, these are the things we're supposed to get excited about in these days. Let's take the limits off. But for now, we still need to get to 300. Listen to me, church. You say, well, I've invited anybody. Yeah, they don't really want to come. Be intentional. Be serious. Start to pray. Try again with humility. Do whatever you can. Do whatever you can to get people to Jesus. You remember the four friends? Some of us got to go through the roof to get them to Jesus. Be resilient. Find a way. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, be resilient now in this week. Find a way to get someone to Jesus. Nobody's looking to their neighbor. <laughs> Say this with me. I'm going to find a way. By the grace of God, to get someone to Jesus. Because it's, it's, it's someone's, no? it's me plus. I'm going to find a way. We are a resilient people. People, I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. But if he doesn't, people are dying. and People are dying without Jesus. And we can't let it happen. We've got to do something now. We've got one week left. 
This week was a slow week for registrations. And let me, before we get there, I just want to say this. I want to say this. This week was a slow week for registrations. Some people say, well, I've invited everybody. Listen, the word of the Lord, Jesus himself said this. He says, the harvest is plentiful. So, will Jesus lie? So don't tell me there's no more people that you can bring. Because then that is a contradiction to the word of God. But sometimes we live just for ourselves and we just try to get through our own problems and difficulties. And I understand that. But I also want to give you good advice. It's when we start to live for others in the kingdom of God that our problem seems to go away. And when God is begun to be glorified within our lives. Don't only look at your own life, your own stress, your own trouble, your own problems. Start to live for God. Start to see how you can be the difference in somebody else's life. And then see what God starts to do for your life. And this is especially for mature Christians. The Lord works different with baby Christians than he works with mature Christians. Have you ever discovered that? It's like when you're a baby Christian, every time you pray, Jesus answers. Every time you cry, he, he calms the storm. <laughs> I remember when I was a Christian like that. Oh, every time something goes wrong, ooh, my world is shaken. Jesus, help me. And Jesus calms the storm. But the more mature I become in the Lord, the more the Lord begins to build my character the more the Lord begins to test my patience. Why is that? Because the Lord has a great plan for my future. And he needs to be able to trust me. He needs to be able to trust that I'm more like Jesus. I oh, this daughter of mine, this son of mine, they live more like Jesus. They love more like Jesus. I can trust them with abundance. Baby Christian, nyum, 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 milk, milk, dirty diapers, nyum, 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 Jesus. Mature Christians, yes, Lord. Mold me, form me, make me solid in the storm. Solid in the storm. Don't just make it about you. Start to get out there and make a difference for the kingdom of heaven. Be the light, be the salt, be the change in somebody else's life and see how God starts to move powerfully within your own life. Can I get a louder amen than that and give Jesus some praise in the house this morning? So there's still room for more. Listen, verse 23, so his master said, Go out in the country lanes. So look at the heart of the Father. He doesn't like empty seats. What does he say? He says, go out in the country lanes, behind the hedges. He says, you've tried here in Jerusalem, Judea. Now I want you to go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I want you to look for more. Amen. Because there's room for more, the word of the Lord says. Go out into the country lanes. Go everywhere behind. Think of anybody. Hallelujah. It just and urged them. This means a serious, intentional invitation. Serious business. Remember, church, it's life and death. It's no joke what we're busy with. We like to be friends and have good times and fun times at church. But let me tell you something. The church is not a social club. There's social elements and we thank God because church should be fun. But also we got to remember that it's life and death. Because once a person's life is over in this world and they haven't given their hearts and lives with Jesus and there is no relationship, there's no more second chances. The hour is urgent. The hour is serious. Let's go wherever we can and find one more. And I'm here today to ask you, come on church, come on, come on. Let's find one more. There's still room for more. Let's fill the house. Lastly, just look at the invitation registration quickly. 217 out of 300. I don't know if there are more now. People, we've had a slow week. Last week we were 55. We only moved 17% this week. We've got one week left to go to at least 28%. Uh, sorry, yeah, because we're at 72%. That 55 is wrong. It's a miscalculation. Sorry. <laughs> Because 217 out of 300 is 72%, which means how many percent do we need to move this week? Which means everybody has to do their, say with me, prepare, say with me, invite, say with me, register, say with me, let's fill the house. Are you mobilized this morning? Is it a good plan? 
If it is, and you say, yes, Lord, I'm going to invite me plus two. We're going to get to 300 and then take the limits off of you. And many are going to come to Jesus. And lives are going to be changed. And revival is going to start. And a great awakening is going to start. And I'm going to be part of it. And I'm going to do the work of the ministry. Then give Jesus a big praise in the house this morning. Remember the word of Jesus before we go into communion. John 4, 34 to 36. My nourishment, my blessing, my providence, my protection, my help comes from doing what? The will of God. When, who sent me and from finishing his work. Verse 35. You know the saying four months between planting and harvest. Say with me, harvest. But I say, wake up. Jesus looked at his disciples and realized that even those who's close to him and who's following him was ignorant. Ignorant of the brokenness and the hurt of Samaria. Because this is the passage where Jesus ministered to the Samaritan woman and gave her living water. He said, you're ignorant. Disciples, wake up. Church, wake up. Don't just live for yourself. Your food does not just come from what you're doing. Your food should come your providence, your protection, your blessing, your healing, your breakthrough should come from doing the will of your Father. Wake up! Because the harvest is already ready. That was the words of Jesus. Wake up and look around. Now look at your neighbor. Say, it's time to wake up, neighbor. And look around. Go like this. It's like you've asked here in Jer Jer Jerusalem, you've like a, a chicken... Scratch, scratch the ground here in Judea. It's time to go to <laughs> chicken, yeah? <laughs> we're not chickens, we're eagles. Amen. Amen. Don't look at your brother, tell them, don't be a chicken, brother, sister. Be an eagle. It's time to fly. <laughs> Jerusalem, Judea, guys. It's time to go to Samaria and over the ends of the earth, the highways and byways of life. Hallelujah. Jesus is waiting. Hallelujah. Jesus is waiting. The feast is ready. The banquet is ready. Now let's offer it to those who have not yet eaten. Let's offer it. Let's offer it. I say wake up and look around. Church, this week you've got to wake up and look around. This morning, you've got to wake up and start to look around and be attentional and prepare and invite and register and fill the house because revival is coming and you and I want to be a part of it. Verse 36, he says, so the harvesters are paid good wages. You remember I told you don't be so occupied with your own life, but start to harvest and, get, and start getting paid good wages. And the fruit they harvest is what? What's the fruit we harvest? People, souls. What's the fruit we harvest? Do we have fruit in our lives? The Bible says fruit are souls and disciples. That's fruit. It's not your gift. Your gift you receive for free. Everybody can operate in their gift. It's not yours. You're not good. It comes from God. Start to honor God and use it to win souls and make disciples. Build your own kingdom on your little gift. No, we all have gifts. So what? Let's employ it to the kingdom of heaven. Start to make a difference. The harvest are paid good wages. The fruit that they harvest is people. Brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. Amen and amen. If you're excited about me, if you're excited with me this morning that God's going to touch people's lives this coming Sunday, and if you're ready to be, if you are mobilized this morning and ready to bring in the harvest, I want you to stand to your feet right there where you are. We're going to pray together before we get into communion. Amen. I want to pray that an anointing come on you this morning to go out. I want to pray the Holy Spirit to come upon you today and to fill you with power and ability to be a worthy witness this week and to pray and to prepare with us. We all need you. There's so many things that needs to be done on the day. We all got to prepare physically and spiritually, spiritually to offer the buffet. But we need to do more than that. We need to go everywhere and invite and collect commitment because people have excuses. It's like that. When it's about the kingdom of heaven and the gospel, there's always excuses. And as the church of God, we need to, learn to become resilient, contesting these things because it's a life and death matter, church. Let's fill the house. Wake up. Look around. Father, I pray for your people today. 
that you fill them with a new anointing, a special anointing to be worthy witnesses, and that they will go out, be soul winners, disciple makers. I pray, Lord, for a miracle that when they invite intentionally, lovingly, patiently, I pray that you will open the hearts of those who need to eat from the buffet in Jesus' name. A miracle to take place. That when the invitation comes, that they say, yes, I need this. You can register me. I'm ready for Jesus. I'm ready to sit at the banquet of the kingdom of heaven. I pray it over your people. Lord, I pray that many will be saved. I pray that your kingdom will be advanced through us as a church. Every individual, not just certain people. In the name of Jesus. If you receive it, just say I, amen. And for just 30 seconds, just say, Lord, use me. A prayer you're praying. I've ministered to you. Now say, Lord, use me. You pray unto God to use you. You pray unto God to change your life. You pray unto God to be the difference. You pray unto God to show you who you must invite and register and even bring. In the name of Jesus. Life and death, serious stuff, not playing around, doing the will of our Father. Doing the will of our Father. Listen, church, Jesus was hungry when he was seated there at the pit, the well of Jacob. He was hungry. But after he ministered to the Samaritan woman, God provided all his needs. That's why when the disciples came, they said, Lord, why aren't you eating? Aren't you hungry? He said, my Food, my nourishment, my blessing is to do the will of the Father. God has got great things in store for everyone here today. But you see, for a long time, you haven't done the will of the Father. You were just seeking the food, seeking the breakthrough, seeking, seeking. God says, I want you to stop seeking what you want and start seeking the lost. For Jesus came to seek those who are lost. My Father, I pray over your people, special anointing, a special touch from heaven here this morning. I declare that as they go out into the harvest fields, the mission fields, that they are mighty, mighty instruments operating under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to bring in the harvest this week intentionally, seriously, like never before. I appreciate you, my Father. I love you, Jesus. We dedicate our 13, our 10 year, 30 November open air harvest event. We dedicate it as a gift to you. Because when your grace reaches more and more, you are thanked. Great thanksgiving comes to you. Great glory comes to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's take our seats for a moment. Those who helps me with the communion, if you could please join me in front. Thank you. I will be serving communion here today. And uh, the communion, the communion is to mobilize us today. The communion is also to minister to every person here who needs Jesus in any area of your life. Listen, church, we can't partake of communion and not become part of the blessings of God. I trust that God's going to do something great in your life through the communion. Maybe you've come with a difficulty. Maybe you've come with a challenge, a need, a sickness, a concern, a worry, a fear. I know that this communion is going to minister to each and every one of us today. The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 to 25, and this is where Paul spoke about what Jesus gave him concerning communion. Then he broke. That was Jesus he broke it into pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Uh, the body of Jesus that was broken, the bread this morning. And then listen to this. He says, do this in remembrance of me. Say with me, remembrance. Jesus wants you to remember him. I thought about that. I said, Lord, but we have never forgotten about you. He says, well, there are some who has forgotten me. He says, but I still love them. Maybe if you've forgotten Jesus and if you're not in a relationship with the Lord, this is your opportunity today to be made whole, to be forgiven, and to get into a relationship with Jesus once again. 
But then the Lord said to me, there are those who have not forgotten me, but I want them to remember me so that they can continue to be more like I am, have my character, live more like I lived practically in the world, and love more like I have loved. Verse 25 says, in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying this is the cup of the new covenant between God and His people. And it's an agreement confirmed with my blood. When we take the cup here this morning, we know there's a new covenant. A covenant of Christ. It's called the covenant of Christ. It forgives your sins. doesn't matter who you are, where you've been. Listen to me, every individual. It doesn't matter. And sometimes the devil is even haunting you with thoughts and memories from the past. God says, it's all washed away in this new covenant by the blood of my son, Jesus Christ. And when you take that cup today, it blesses you. It cleanses you. It forgives you. But the good news is this covenant does not only have forgiveness in store and eternal life. No. It has blessing and protection and deliverance and restoration and grace upon grace for each and every one of us. Are you ready for the communion this morning? Thank you, brothers and sisters. Let's continue with the bread. When, once you've received the bread, I want you just to look at it and just thank the Lord, Jesus, that He gave His body for you. His body was broken so that you can be restored and made whole. The question is, will you believe it today? Will you believe with me that when you take the bread and partake of communion, that God works as only He can within your life? Everything we do has to do with faith and belief. Don't just use it this morning because it's something we do at church. It's a sacrament that we need to do. No, believe that once you've partaken of this, that everything changes in your life. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you love the world so much that you gave Jesus. When we look at the table, we see how you gave him. You gave him that his body would be broken and his blood would be shed. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the bread of communion, blood of communion, this new covenant. My Father, I pray this morning that as we come in union with you, that we will touch every heart, every life, and mobilize us this morning to be more like, to love more like, to love more like Jesus. Amen. Let's partake. As you take the cup, I want you to look at the cup. Thank God for the new covenant. That cup speaks of the blood of Jesus and it took the blood of Jesus to pay, to pay, because God does not make covenants without blood with His people. Jesus had to shed that blood as a ransom for you and I to establish a new covenant with you. A covenant of His grace, a covenant of His salvation, deliverance and restoration, a covenant of forgiveness, a covenant of eternal life and every other promise. As you partake of it this morning, thank God that He moves in your life. If you need to give your heart and life to Jesus today, there's an uncertainty in you. There's an uncertainty that you have a relationship with Jesus. There is any uncertainty in you this morning that you are not right with God through Jesus. That you in your own words this morning say, Lord, here I am. Forgive me of what I've done. I surrender my life to you. Accept me. And pray and say this, Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God who was raised from the dead on the third day. Pray it. I believe in you. Here's my life. I want to live for you. Please forgive me all my sins, my iniquities, my trespasses. If you have a real con sin confession and a real repentance here this morning, as we partake of this covenant and this blood, this cup, God comes to bless you. God comes to save you gives you eternal life you will be his son and his daughter I want you just before we partake of the cup I'm not going to pray just bring your life before God pray the prayer I've given you make sure that you're right with God invite him in your life right now
take 30 seconds or a minute and then we will partake together. This is the cup of blessing, the cup of your new covenant. Thank you, Lord, that you've forgiven the sins, that you have adopted sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord, that you've mobilized us to be more like, to live more like, to love more like Jesus. Amen. Let's partake together. Just receive it. Just close your eyes and lift your hands to heaven and receive what God's doing. The communion works. The bread works. The blood works. It works. It washes. It cleanses. It revives. It sets on fire. It mobilizes. It forgives. It gives eternal life. It pours out blessing. It works. Just for a moment, thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Say, Lord Jesus, thank You for what You've done. And in Your own words, just before we close, just worship Him out of the bottom of your heart for 30 seconds. Exuberant worship, dedicated, intentional from the bottom of your heart to the King of all kings, to the Lord of all lords. Hallelujah. Because He is doing it in your life. He is doing it this morning. He is doing it. He works. He works. He works. He works in this church. He works in our cities, works in our homes. He works. He does what only He can do. Oh, yes. Quebro sebento, brene shikim belere sebento. Niem brodo shikita branes, kainom brodo shikim belere sebento robu kushito. Kibro mo shikata dalarada. For know this, that I'm the Lord your God, the King of kings. Will I ever leave you? Will I ever forsake you? Will I ever give you over? For the enemy to come and steal and kill and destroy in your life? No, says the Lord. Just as a mother will never forget her children, so I can never forget you. And you are written on the palms of my hand. And once again this morning, my children, I want you to know that I love you. That I love you. And that you are close and dear to my heart. And if you serve me, and if you continue to be faithful and caring and loving and honoring me, I will certainly raise you. I will certainly make a way for you. I will certainly open the Jordan. I will certainly open the Red Sea for you. I will certainly pour out such a blessing that you cannot contain. I will still be your provider and your protector and your healer, says the Lord. The Lord says this morning, now go out. Bring in my harvest, for there are many out there whom you are connected to that needs me. I have prepared their hearts, says the Lord of hosts. They are now ready. Wake up, church. Look around. The harvest is ready. Go out and reap, for I pay good wages to my harvesters, says the Lord of hosts. In Jesus' name. If you receive it, shout Amen. Give Him a big praise. Let's stand to our feet. Raise your hands this morning for the blessing. <sighs> now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit of God be with you as you go into this week of bringing in the harvest. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you receive it, shout a shout of praise. Give Him praise in this place. Come on, let's make it loud, church. Yay! Bless you. Say with me one more time. Prepare. Invite. Register. Let's fill the house. Now point at the neighbor. Say, come on, neighbor. Let's prepare. Let's invite. Let's register them. 
Let's fill the house. And come on, give Jesus a praise. God bless you. Remember, we fast Thursday to Friday, and we see you Friday at our prayer meeting. Please do get in contact with us. We would love to hear from you. Also find us online on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram at Jesus for Nations Ministries or JFN Ministries. And we'll see you online.